So, um, Priscilla, um, if this were um, an audience of citizen journalists, um, uh, would you tell them, get out your phone and here's how you do it? What would you, what would you tell them? How do they get started? Um, it would really depend on where we were and what we were planning on documenting. Um, a lot of the places where witness works today around the world are very high conflict, high security places. And we work with mostly community members and local activists who are risking their lives often to film what's happening in the hopes that that could lead to justice and accountability. Um, we've seen how video can move the needle, so we've seen that all around the world. Um, Ta-Nehisi Coates has a great quote which says, you know, the violence that you see happening in the U.S. today against African American men, it's not new. The cameras are new, right? Um, so we really understand the potential of video to move conversations, to catalyze movements, to force processes for justice to work in places where they wouldn't normally. Um, in, in my native Brazil, um, there was a study that showed that if you were killed by the police in the city of Rio, 99.2% uh, of the cases would be dismissed without even a proper investigation. Um, and when we looked at what you needed to have to be in the 0.8% of the case at least being investigated or evidence being collected, um, it was one of two things. Either you needed to be a high profile victim or you needed to have some sort of video angle. So we really understand the power of video to defy legacies and generations of impunity and structural inequality. However, we also see um, lots of video that doesn't have impact and doesn't lead to accountability. So when we think about the gap of why, right? Why do some videos have impact and others don't? There are lots of answers there, but a lot, about, a lot of it is about building strategy into the creation and the distribution of these videos so you know what are you what do you hope to achieve with this and often you know our gut instinct is like post it <laughs> and that's often the worst thing you can do in many contexts if you think about security and safety so i don't have an answer of what i would say if this were a group of citizen journalists we would start with what is it that you're trying to document and why and what are you trying to achieve and once we start from there then we can work backwards to What's the strategy that makes sense? Who needs to see this video for something to actually change? Who are the decision makers, the influence makers, the community members who should be involved in this strategy for, for your work, the risks you're taking um, to be warranted? So it, it really would be know your strategy, think about the safety of you and the people that you're filming, and have clarity about what it is you're trying to achieve so that you really understand um, the risk benefit there. I just want to stay on you for a second. You, yeah. you mentioned security. What is the security issue around a video? So it's, it's to me, I think of it as provenance, keeping, uh, making sure that that video is um, identifiable. It's real. It has maybe um, metadata attached to it, which I talk, talk about that. Yeah. Um, do folks remember the Eric Garner video here in New York? Yes. Does anyone not yes. know that case? Okay, um, there's one person who's in jail from that scene today. Does anyone know who that is? Yeah, it's the guy who took the video. Um, and his one regret, his name is Ramsey Orda, and we've done some work with him. He's currently serving four years. His one regret is not filming that. He would have taken that risk at the time and done it. His one regret is having his name attached to it because that led to years of persecution and targeting and undercover cops waiting outside his wife's job and parked outside his house. Um, so this is one set of security concerns and assessments that you're looking at. What are the potential rep rep repercussions for the person filming, for the people filmed, and for the audience? So that's one set of concerns. You're also looking at concerns around trauma and re-victimization and dignity and ethics, right? What is it that we're achieving when we hit the share button without a clear purpose in mind? Who are we re-victimizing? Often a lot of these videos that we see that document abuse, the distribution of them online is also or could also be a form of abuse, right? So why is it, right? Why is it that we're doing it? So there are security concerns, there are ethical concerns, and we have lots of training materials and uh, guidance that we have available for anyone who's interested in digging deeper on that. Okay, thank you.